welcome to the Chapel in the Hills. We're happy to have you as our guests, and we hope that your visits will be both enjoyable and rewarding. The building with the grass roof which you pass on your way here is called Sadu, which in Norwegian means storehouse. It contains literature and additional items pertaining to this chapel. These buildings and beautiful grounds are maintained through visitors' donations and gifts. The building you just entered is a church, a house of worship dedicated to the glory of God. Called the State Church in Norwegian Sarkirka, it's an exact replica of the famous 800-year-old Morgan Church, situated 100 miles northwest of Oslo, Norway. A few comments concerning the exterior of the chapel. As you walked up the gentle slope to the chapel, you may have been impressed by the similarity between the building and the ponderosa pine trees which frame it. Like them, it grows narrower and narrower as it rises higher and higher, pointing to the blue sky above. The details of the structure add to the impression of loftiness, as does the slope of the several roofs and the very shape of the shapes covering the roofs. There are 16,000 of them. Truly like the surrounding pines, the chapel in the hills may lift the beholder upward toward God. Perhaps the four dragon heads on the roof surrounding the upper gables caught your eye. They are similar to the figureheads which the Vikings of old carved for their longboats. Their appearance on the stave church may be in part a relic of pagan days in Norway. I'll show but they may also after. be there simply because the craftsmen who built the original stave churches adapted them from their longboats. In any event, the crosses which you notice surrounding the lower gables outnumber them, so that if the dragon heads indeed have a religious significance, it's still the crosses which predominate. At the very apex of the roof is that old Christian symbol, the rooster or cock. It reminds the beholder of Peter's denial of his Lord. The cock's crow brought to Peter's mind Christ's warning. The walkway which surrounds the church called the ambulatory had a number of uses. Partly enclosed, it protected the foundation from the elements. It provided a place where people could wait in inclement weather for the church doors to be opened. In it, the men left their weapons, which must not be carried into the house of God. You will want to examine the intricate carving surrounding the main portal through which you enter. The elaborate intertwining of animals and serpents represents the struggle between good and evil, between the forces of dying paganism and the emerging power of the Christian gospel and it is the latter which is victorious. As you look about you, numerous features remind you that this is in truth a Christian church, a place of worship and inspiration. As you face the front looking into the chancel, you see a simple stone altar, the center of Christian worship, which is adorned with a cross, a Bible, and candles. The lectern or a pulpit reminds us that the reading and preaching of God's word is a part of the Christian service. On one of the pillars to the right of the chancel steps is the baptismal font, where people are brought into the fellowship of Christ. Notice the small sliding door, about 18 inches square, to the right of the altar. When the door is pushed back, there is revealed an opening known as the leper's window. Through it, lepers could share in the worship services and receive Holy Communion. Denied admission to the church, they were not excluded from the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. As you stand at the center of the church facing the altar, you look upward and become aware of the three arches which separate the chancel from the nave of the church. They remind you of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The 14 X-shaped braces are carved to form beautiful crosses, the so-called crosses of St. Andrew. Tradition says that Andrew, one of Jesus' disciples, died for his faith with his arms and legs outstretched on a cross. The carved faces at the very tops of the twelve pillars, or staves, represent the twelve disciples of our Lord. The great staves at the four corners upon which the structure depends represent the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Many things about the Chapel of the Hills draw people to a sense of the nearness of God. Your visit here may have reminded you of the words of the Psalms. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Please feel free to examine the intricacies of this unique chapel and meditate upon their meaning. And as you go on your way, may God go with you. 
May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. steps behind me. <laughs> This is the chapel on the hills in Rapid City, South Dakota. <laughs> 